Hey. All right. Well, uh, welcome to the stream. Hi, I'm Josh, uh, otherwise known as 48K Ram, and uh, figure rather that I do something a little, well, interesting to me, hopefully interesting to the people too, and uh, chat about some uh, controllers today. Let me uh, change my camera angle just a little bit. There we go. Um, sound okay? I'm I'm running sound through the uh, overhead cam. It's not what I usually do, but a uh, bit of a compromise squeezing everything onto the uh, onto the retro desk here. So. Uh, Hey, T.D. Reed, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the follow. Great. So, um, yeah, one of the things, one of the things I, I really enjoy doing uh, with my, my retro computer collection, vintage computer collection, is uh, hosting an annual, or actually it's, it's sort of semi-annual now, of a, a retro game night at the company where I work. And... <clears throat> That's I haul out, you know, a whole bunch of my vintage systems, a whole bunch of old games, and increasingly I've been adding newer stuff like the the Mister and things like that. But I, I found out very quickly that I didn't have enough controllers, and so since in the last like two years, I've been sort of collecting uh, controllers and adding on, trying to find, you know, high quality ones as well as economical ones. Hey, Tom Fuchs, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll try not to actually be. I might be a little too loud. It looks like on the meter. Back it down just a slight, just a little bit. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I wanted to have really good controllers, and I wanted to have sort of a uh, authentic feel to to the games. You know, I wanted them to to play a lot like they played back in the day, and a lot of people turned up for this. We have, you know, my coworkers, you know, adults, in you know, my age. Ish, um, and then they, they brought their kids, and the kids really get a kick out of it. And I and I want everyone to be able to really have a good time playing the games, and also have the games feel like they used to feel. One of the most annoying things that can happen during a game on, on one of these old systems is for the controller to be a piece of crap. Um, so uh, I think I've gotten the overhead cam here. This is just a little selection of what I've got here. This uh, is an original Atari CX40. Uh, in fact, this was one of the ones that I had as a kid. You can see it's actually missing one of its feet down there. And it's generally fairly well beat up because it was very well loved by me and my brother when, when we were kids. And one of the things that happens with these controllers is they wear out. And then the games are basically unplayable. The, the first time I brought one of my older systems out for uh, some uh, friends to play, they were just, you know, wrenching on this controller left and right, trying to get it to work, and I was just like, okay, that's that's just no good. We can't have that. Uh, so, um, I sort of dove down the rabbit hole at that point. Um, and, all right, let me, I'll just go through what, what I've got out here on the table. So this is the Atari CX40. This is this is a genuine uh, Atari uh, made in Taiwan. Uh, vintage is the one I had as a kid. Next to it, I have the Hyperkin Trooper. Now, I've been championing this on Twitter kind of a lot lately because, in my opinion, it is one of the best Atari style. And by Atari style, I mean, you know, this shape. It, it's basically a recreation CX40, right? And it, it gives you the, the the stick feel of playing an Atari 2600 is what it was intended for. This is made by Hyperkin. Um, you can see it's it's intended for their uh, Retron 77 console, but um, it also works on uh, real systems, Ataris, Commodores, basically everything that takes an Atari style nine pin joystick. And a couple of nice things about it: it's weighted. So it's fairly hefty. If I pick it up, it's considerably heavier than my original CX40. Um, and then it has uh, dual fire buttons. Now these are wired in parallel; they're the same, but it makes the joystick ambidextrous. So you know, lefties and righties can play, which is something that the original CX40 didn't have, unfortunately. And it's got a really long cord. It's got like a got like a ten foot cord on the thing, which is is great. Um, those of you who have been following me on Twitter will know that I, the one thing I tell, warn people about the stick is that this, this stick right here, 
uh, it, it screws into the base on a plastic thread and if it comes even slightly loose it creates a pressure a tension point on there and it just snaps right off right here at the base but um, actually I think I have yeah I've got a few disassembled I we went through a couple of these at the local arcade where I work or used to work um, on the Retron 77 and I so I, that's when I figured out about the joystick part but it's it's membrane switches so this is one of the this is the inside membrane contact and you can see it's just the uh, you know black conductive plastic on traces and this is the little little hub piece that goes on the bottom of this for four-way and it's the same there's there's a similar one underneath the fire button the fire button doesn't have a spring on it like it does on the real 640s but you know the uh, it feels pretty good just just using this uh, using the rubber membrane. Um, but the the awesome thing about this stick is it's like $16. It is super cheap. So it's very cost effective for me to get a bunch of these and just haul them out for retro game night because if they get damaged, I mean, hey, they're pretty sturdy. We run them at the arcade and they last months with you know public play and kids wailing on them. So they're sturdy when they do break it's only a 16 17 dollar controller so I, I really like these and I've, that's why I've said about this Bahamut Jiraiya hey welcome right using the Ranger didn't care for its paddle mode yeah so I'll get to the Ranger here that's that's what I've got right here um, <clears throat> well alright I'll just move on to the Ranger so this is this is one of Hyperkin's newer controllers the yeah, see if I can navigate this camera and it's not going to focus on that, but the Hyperkin uh, Ranger. And this again is made for their Retron uh, 77 2600 type console. And it's it's interesting because it has uh, a thumbstick and a paddle right here. And yeah, as, as Bahamut's saying, the, the paddle is... I mean, it's functional. It's not the most accurate. I find, like, the range on this... the physical range on this pot is two and a half times the work usable electrical range, at least on my Atari. Um, but it does it does work. Now, they they say it's only for the twenty six hundred, and it's known that it won't work on the eight bits. And that is because I tweeted about this uh, back when I was discovering it as well. Something I don't know if it's coding convention. I don't think it's really anything to do with the hardware. But basically, this come the way this comes wired. The the paddle uh, pot is connected on the pin to where the Atari 8-bit expects paddle two to be, not paddle one. So it shows up as player two, basically. And for those of you who don't know, Atari paddles always came in pairs. So there was a one and two, and they both plugged into the same uh, DB9. Each one of these ports can handle two paddles. So they make an adapter, Hyperkin does, to allow you to do two-player. And I haven't tried that. I was, um, I think one of, my, one of my friends on Twitter, Bill Lang, uh, was going to get one of those and check that out to see if that solved the problem. But what I did is I just opened it up and switched the wire. There's actually a pad on there for, pot, for paddle B and A. The paddle A is connected to nothing. The paddle B is connected to the pot here. So I just switched the wires internally. And it, and it made it work. Now, it's not the greatest paddle out there, but, you know, the range you can actually move this thing is about the range. The range you can move it without taking your hand off the, off the knob is about the range electrically that works, even though the paddle itself can move almost a full turn. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, so the other things... Just like the just like the Hypercon Trooper, it has a left-handed or right-handed switch, so you can play it like like this, or like this. And I definitely prefer it as a controller. It's it's not the greatest as a paddle. I actually don't have a real set of Atari paddles because I haven't played that many paddle games, um, so I need to fix that. But then yeah, it's got a switch down here to go between stick mode and paddle mode. And that's the Hyperkin Ranger. Again, it's got a really long, really long cord on it. Oh, and the cord exit has a nice little mode that if you want to use it in 
I guess this would be left-handed mode, you can switch it so the cord exits on the other side. So they really think of they think of things like that that, that I find really nice. So this is this is the most recent addition to my controller collection. The ones that I when I first started off on this, uh, a guy named Benj Edwards, uh, he's on Twitter at Benj Edwards. He was making his own custom joysticks, and this this is one of them. I have a few of them, and uh, I'm friends with him on Twitter. And actually, in real life, we've we've traded machines back and forth as well. Um, so I. I came, I bought a few of these, and uh, he hooked me up with a few more. He's an awesome dude. You should all go follow him if you don't already. But this is what he calls his BX80. And there's no way this is going to show up here. But, yeah. It, it just basically says handmade by Benj Edwards, and it's got some serial number. I think it says 201. I don't know. He built a fair number of this style of joystick. He also made ones... <coughs> hmm, sorry. For a bunch of vintage consoles, the NES, the Super NES, Genesis, possibly PC Engine, and also Virtual Boy. He made a few of these that connected the Virtual Boy, so I thought that was pretty crazy. But he's he's a cool dude, and these are um, just project box enclosures, but they're they're very sturdy, and I don't have any qualms about letting kids at, at me at Retro Game Night whale on these things. And then he uses real Sanwa buttons, arcade buttons, and uh, joysticks. So that's what this is. Is It's um, Sanwa, I think it's a uh, JLF uh, type joystick mounted in here along with uh, two buttons. And these buttons are wired in uh, parallel just like they are on the Hyperkin Trooper. Uh, I actually have two of these. Um, yeah, another one. Not not that it looks any different, other than the sticker on here to remind me which one it is. This one is a little different. I had him wire this button in parallel with the up direction, so that if I'm playing a platformer, I can you know jump with this button, so I can be moving back and forth, you know, fire or whatever, and then I can jump on that one. I I find that. I find it pretty handy to have to have a button dedicated to jump on some of these machines. And I've seen other people do this too online. Um, uh, Control Alt Reese, uh, he's been doing some segments on hooking up uh, Neo Geo AES controllers to vintage systems, and he also went this route with having one of the buttons on the AES controller in parallel with the the up direction, so you can use it for platformers. So you know, I got a couple of these. Definitely not the most cost-effective joysticks that I've that I've ever had. Um, these these things cost a pretty penny, but they're well built. And considering the parts and effort he put into it, um, I I think it's totally worth it. These are nicely drilled out, especially this one. Um, <coughs> let me let's see. I've got <coughs> yeah. Uh, this is this is the. Uh, inside of one of them. This is this is one's a prototype. I'm actually working on a different circuit on this one. <coughs> but the Sanwa JLF stick normally has this plate connected to it. And then this goes through like if you look on a arcade system, the, you'll find the control panel typically has uh, four screws. And they're in this position here. This was before he was actually taking this plate off. And then underneath the dust washer you can see securing the joystick to the case directly without the involvement of this plate. And that just makes the screws pretty much hidden underneath the dust washer. And so it's another nice little nice little touch that he put on it. Um, also, those uh, those of you not familiar with uh, the Sanwa <clears throat> arcade sticks. That's what it looks like on the bottom. It's got four micro switches around the side here, and then this center piece has a spaced washer in there that hits all those micro switches when you move it to the various different directions. And then it has um, this 
common five pin header here that has a common ground and then the four directions. And it normally ships with this, you know, type of wiring harness here and you just wire it into whatever it is you're building, home arcade cabinet. <coughs> and um, another nice thing about these joysticks, so this piece right here, you can see this, this plastic piece, it's commonly referred to as the gate. And if you press these little black, if I can get this, these little black plastic clips, hold it on there, and if I press them in, pop off the gate. <clears throat> so it might be hard to see on the stream, but it's basically just clear acrylic, and it's the limiting factor on how far this joystick can move. So if you take this piece off, you can pop this inner ring. I'm trying to do this so you can actually still see it on the camera. And if you push it up and then rotate this inner ring, it goes into a sort of a diamond configuration. And now, if you snap this gate back onto the joystick, <coughs> you'll notice that the stick cannot be moved into the corners. So, <coughs> hmm, sorry, I'm going to get something to drink here real quick. So if I, if I take this stick, which, which is just in this in the stock gate configuration, press it straight up, I can go back and forth in the up position. So I can move between the the you know um, northwest and the northeast diagonals. When you switch this gate piece in here and you push it up, you can't move it side to side. It's locked into that up direction. If you want to go to the other side, you can do that too. But basically, you can't hit the diagonals in this configuration. So this is what's known as four-way mode. And this is good for maze games like Pac-Man and the like, because you never there's no diagonal in Pac-Man. And if you try to press up, it's too easy to get on to one of the other sides, and that can produce um, undesirable operation in, in certain maze games. So these JLF sticks are nice because you can put them into four-way mode. And it's pretty easy. You just have to open up, you know, take the top off this controller, or if you own a real arcade cabinet, you just unfold the control, uh, tilt down the control panel, and you can swap this out pretty easy, no tools required. So that's, you know, that's the inside of uh, Sanwa Japanese arcade stick. The American arcade switches, arcade sticks, will often have leaf switches on the sides, like if you look into, uh, I think Donkey Kong, it's like that where this this piece is has a pretty big washer and it moves over and, and hits a big leaf switch. And it feels very different. It's very different action than the Japanese sticks. And let's see. Last thing I guess I wanted to nerd out about right now is uh, stuck underneath something, of course. Uh, this is the USB version of one of those. So this, I think, was based on his uh, Ben Jedward's uh, BX110. So it's got two front sticks, uh, two front buttons there, and then six on the top. This was, I think, intended for his Super Nintendo stick. So it was... I forget how he had the configuration, but it was basically A, B, X, Y, left and right shoulder buttons and then uh, start and select. Thanks, TD Reed. I, I, I hope so. I just occurred to me that uh, I kind of like yakking about this sort of stuff. Um, um, I hope, hope people are finding this educational, enter, entertaining, edutainment, I don't know. Um, all right. But this one, rather than connected to a Super Nintendo, because I don't actually own a Super Nintendo, um, wait, let me grab my other one. It'd be easier to show because I already took the screws out of this one. What we have here is it's been rewired with one of these USB joystick boards. Let me 
get this loose enough so I can maybe have a prayer of getting it on camera. It's got a lot of wires to it. So this this joystick board right there, you can buy this guy on Amazon for ten or fifteen bucks, and it's it's often sold as you know no lag USB arcade interface something like that. You have a BX110. Yes, it is amazing. It is super amazing. Um, I, I really love the way he builds his sticks. You can see inside of this one, uh, there's a couple of a couple of nice little touches. A, it's weighted. It's got uh, two, four, six, eight, ten ounces of, of weights attached to the inside. And then also this standoff right here and, and an adjustable screw to support the top piece right here so it doesn't it doesn't bend down. So he did a really good job on this one, I think. S cholera, hey, how's it going? Uh, you missed something important. Oh well, we'll we'll talk about other stuff. We'll go back around. Let's see. Bahamut used an adapter to allow the Genesis pads to be used with the C64 128. Yes, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I don't actually have one, but I know what you're talking about. Um, so anyway, with this board, you can take you know whatever controller arrangement you want. Again, this is one of Benji's, and and I have this stick in four-way mode. And you, well, you probably can't see how the gate is there. And then just have all of those buttons uh, connected in here. This thing supports a ton of buttons, and then it supports buttons as well as the five-pin Sanwa type joystick connector. And it just gives you a USB connection. And yeah, for like 15 bucks, you can get that, including the USB cable. And then let's see. And it actually goes like that. Pop all this inside this wonderful little box, and poof, you have yourself a USB arcade controller. <coughs> and I use this one and the other one that I have, I have two of these two player games. I use this with my Mister, and it works uh, really well with Mister, but it'll work with any emulator like the uh, PlayStation Classic. I've got one of those around here somewhere that I've that I've hacked and it's run, running RetroArch, or you know, emulators on your PC. Um, so that board coupled with anything. And if you use one of those boards, like with uh, the Neo Geo AES stick, uh, the way uh, the way Reese is shown on his YouTube channel, um, you can connect that to one of these USB boards as well. <coughs> and I imagine he'll probably show that on his channel at some point. Uh, super old school and just like to use the Atari style. <coughs> like the Slick Stick Tac 2 style, but yeah. The busted slick stick. If you're into repair, now the the, the slick stick the, is that the one with the big bat on it when and the button on top. I'm trying to clean the contacts on the slick stick, but it's still not perfect. Um, yeah, so the. I forget about the slick stick. Is it uh, is it a micro switch style joystick, or does it use um, PC boards and conductive pads? But my 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 first suggestion is this: Deoxit D5, uh, or some people prefer Deoxit Gold, I guess. But I I think the D5 works pretty well. <clears throat> what this is, it's a it's a contact cleaner and deoxidizer, and I use this. All over the place. Anytime I'm suspecting that I'm having contact problems, get some um, generic contact cleaner. Yeah, the, I don't. I don't know what the magic on this is. I have no idea, but it it works. It works considerably better than even the ethanol that I used to use uh, or isopropanol. Uh, so I really like it. Yes, it does have a lubricant in it. Exactly. Try the Wico. Oh, the, yeah, that's it. The Wico. That's the one with the bats. That's the one I was thinking of. Thanks. So I, I highly recommend this stuff. It's a little pricey, but totally worth it in my opinion. Um, uh, a slick stick. Let's see. If I can pull this thing up here without crushing my laptop's processor. Oh yeah, okay. Right, yeah, very similar to the to the Tac 2. So I'm looking inside here. Yeah, it looks like it's just got 
metal contact switches and I'm guessing that they they just wear out over time <coughs> yeah deoxid is just great uses a tire valve <laughs> that's yeah, that's kinda crazy um, yeah I, I don't know I the only the only joysticks I've ever actually done any repairs on is my CX40 and uh, well maybe maybe I'll show that right now let me see if I have my yeah see if this will work that's not gonna work let's try this one Oh yeah, I can't, yeah, impressions on them from years of use and probably oxidizing and yeah, it's it can be really tough to to get those things get those things into working order. And don't worry about derailing me. This is I, I got no script. I got no script. This is all off the cuff. But I just wanted to pop this open here because um, now this is specific to the Atari CX40. But I, I mentioned how these things wear out. There's two things about them that wear out. First is the PC board. Uh, the CX40 uses uh, metal dome switches there. And these things, yeah, they just, they, they oxidize, they wear out. There's what, what these things usually are is some sort of conductive metal over top of us, less than, less than conductive, but has the right mechanical form factor piece of metal and if you wear out that conductive part of the metal you know there's there's no fixing it unless you want to somehow get more metal over it some people will put some a dab of solder on it um, it's it's all less than optimal see all the arcade style ones are hard to hold in your hand the one you have on your desk there yeah the this is I, I think I think this was a good compromise in this style right here because I can hold this in my hand fairly comfortably, but yeah, it definitely feels better, you know, on on a table mashing buttons, <coughs> and that's that's why I, I like the Hyperkin Trooper because it's it feels really comfortable in your hand. The way they did the, their little uh, triangular chamfer on these corners, so when you put it against your palm. There's no corner there to dig into it. Feels really nice. Feels really nice. Uh, all right, back to the CX40. This board right here is actually a modern reproduction. Say that one more time. What's the model? Uh, the Hyperkin Trooper. This joystick here. Uh, it's made for their Retron 77 console. The but the Hyperkin Trooper. It's like a $16 Atari style joystick. And it feels good. It has weights in it. Um, it is durable. We've used these at the arcade. Yeah, it works with the C64. It works with anything that takes a Atari-style joystick. So Atari, uh, Amiga, only only get one button. C64, a ZX Spectrum with a Kempston interface. <coughs> works with all those. Um, all right, CX40. This is this is a reproduction uh, PCB. And it's available from a company called Best Electronics. Their website looks like it's from the era that, of the computers that they're selling. It is fairly hideous, but he has a lot of good stuff there. A guy's name is Brad, I think. So you, you can buy these kits. They just come with this, this, this PC board. And you just pull these little connectors off of the original Atari PCB and put them onto this PCB drop it get this wire maneuver break drop it into the old housings and now you have nice properly functioning switches and that brings us to the other problem with the C64 is this white inner stick so this this silicone boot here has an actual plastic stick inside it and they all do <clears throat> looks very much like this. So, uh, best managed to find a company to make reproduction inner sticks. So that's what this is. 
and um, it's not going to be very easy to see it in this light unfortunately but you can start to see some stress points on this stick and if you pull one of these out of a, of a really heavily worn uh, CX-40 you'll see it's starting to crack away from here and the problem is when, when you bend it like this it doesn't mechanically couple to this piece here and so it doesn't put enough pressure on the dome switches and then coupled with the fact that your dome switches are deteriorating your controller just basically stops working so you can get yourself one of these guys rebuild your original CX-40s and that's what I've done with the two that I've had from my childhood these are the ones that were with my original Atari 400 and there's a live on camera I have lost the screw or the spring that was in these things Ugh. probably knocked it under something how not to repair joysticks And there's carpet in this room, so if I knocked it on the carpet, it's going to take me a week to find it. Maybe I'll just set this aside for right now. On-camera gaffs. Yeah, I will finish rebuilding this later. Right, the adapters. So, yeah, it you'll you will you will occasionally hold on. You'll occasionally see people telling you that you can use a Genesis three-button controller on an Atari-style computer, and under some circumstances it will work. Some circumstances it doesn't, and there are some electrical issues with that, which lead me and other people to say don't do it uh, you can you can damage the machine I think that's especially true of the Commodore 64 which I have right here but there is a company called Backbit and they make a device called the Genesis I think is what it is the Genesis or Genesis -er. And uh, it allow it's a converter that allows you to safely use a Genesis control pad on a Commodore 64, and it looks similar to this, but that's not what this is. This is a new device that I have actually yet to test, and it's called the Two Bit Joystick Doubler. So, what it what it is here is one DB9 input, uh, two DB9 DE9 I know technically outputs, and then a switch. So. For, this was a thing that, that, that threw me when I first got into the Commodore 64 because I didn't have one of these as a kid. Some games want the joystick on port 1, some games want the joystick in port 2. And I didn't know for a long time that it was not generally considered safe to unplug <coughs> the uh, joystick when the machine is hot. Uh, so I was just doing it. and Luckily I don't think it caused any problems on this machine, but I'm not totally sure. I know I did have to replace the CIA on this at one point, but I think it was like that when I got it. But anyway, so that's where this little device comes in. So I'm going to fire this up right now. <coughs> we're going to take we're going to take the Hyper Trooper. We're going to plug it into the back bit. Check out the back bit cartridge. Yeah, I, I looked at that, but it looks like it's mostly for programming stuff, right? It's not not really generally intended to run like cartridge images on. I don't know enough about the C64 family in the universe. But anyway, yeah, so this guy just if you can if you can see it's perfectly lined up with these two joystick ports here and just pops right in. You load games and ROMs on it. Okay. I'm I'll have to look into that a little bit more because I don't I don't have anything to run uh ROM cartridge games on here. Only thing I have for my I have a Pi fifteen forty one. I have the SD IEC or a D sixty four PRG on a micro SD and go. Really? Okay. I clearly misunderstood what that thing's purpose was in life. I will have to look at that.
because their prices were, were were quite good. Um, I think this device here was like twenty five dollars and five bucks shipping, and apparently it has it, it has integrated circuits in here, uh, analog switches, and so they claim that it it will protect your machine from doing something stupid like using a Genesis controller or hot plugging the Atari, the DB9 controller. <coughs> Thinking of getting a back bit or a Ultimate 1541. Back bit is so nice. I'll have to uh, I have to build the others. Yeah, I I wouldn't mind getting some sort of cartridge solution for I'm I'm fairly satisfied with my disk solutions. I have a Pi 1541 around here somewhere. And then uh yeah, the SDIEC, which works with most things. Um, but I might might be getting another Commodore 64, so in that case I'll need some other solution. Maybe I'll look into that. I appreciate the suggestion. Um, so, yeah, so you can just have it in there and whatever game, whatever port your game needs. Apparently you can do both as well. So it can register as port 1, both ports, or just port 2. Oh yeah, okay. Sorry, I, did, I haven't put uh, two and two together as far as these names. Yes, I will definitely be getting back to you about the C64. Um, like I said, you know, it's been a little bit of a tight month, but yeah. Yep, I, I've, I've finally figured it out. Mm, brain, brain power. <laughs> so I'm going to fire this up here. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Let's see. I'm gonna switch over to take take my my face off the screen, and we will switch over to the Commodore. So I've got the fast I get the Epic's fast load in here. So I'm just gonna do the fast load, punch that in, and so yeah, now I can use this. I have it set to port two because that's what the, this program expects. If I switch it over to port one, yeah, it's it's not working now. Oh yeah, okay, so now, now I'm just hitting random keys apparently. Well, let's put it back to port 2. Nope, 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 nope. Start over. Alright, so I'm going to file browser. Uh, I'm running in file browser. Let's go into games. Um, most of these are modern games, so let's see. Does anyone know if there's a, a port 1? Port one game. Gianna want I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm gonna fire it up. Let's see what happens. We loading screens. Yes, I'm using a cracked version with a trainer. That's how I roll. Alright. Yep, alright, so I can switch it over to port 1, where this older software expects it to be. Alright. Uh, oh, run stop. Start. Uh, no. Let's see. Sure, limited lives. I need it. Yeah, why not? No collision. No, I don't need that. No. No. Nope. All right. Let's see. All right. Yeah. So the trainer wanted me to have it in port one, and the game wants me to be in port two. That is super annoying. Oh yeah. Whoops. All right. So now I'm gonna switch to my 
other BX stick here, like I was saying, this one is wired for platformers. Yeah, port's a little tight there. Turn the volume down on my TV. All right, so now I can run around here, and if I press this, I will jump just like I should. There we go. Yeah. Oh, what's that thing? I better want it. Oh, now I can blast people. Look at that. I basically never played this game. <coughs> Alright, let's swap that out. And plug in the uh would you consider that stick to be sensitive to the movements or are you pressing super hard? The one I was the one I was using, the arcade stick? It's very sensitive. I mean, it's it's a real arcade stick, you know. It, as soon as you hear the, let me get it close. You can hear the noise. That's as far as you have to go on these things. <coughs> That's why I like the the uh, <coughs> the Japanese style. All right, yeah, the Hyperkin controllers. These these are nice too. I. Uh, I really like them. For for the price, if you just need uh, an Atari-style joystick, I think it can't be beat. Uh, I, um, hey Bert, uh, he's uh, another YouTube and uh, Twitter retro dude. Uh, he's refurbishing, a C he's putting together a C64 system for a kid with special needs. And I was just like, oh yeah, you need joysticks? Here's the one. So I just drop shipped in two of these on Amazon because they really are great. Now, yeah plug in <coughs> this guy yeah so I noticed earlier that this guy freaks out using the back bit hey Bert yeah he put he does he does good videos I like his stuff hmm interesting All right I know this uh, Ranger works with the C64, so I'm going to plug it back in here. Yeah. Um, load the. Uh, Valencia. Here we go. All right. Yeah, so if you like playing with a with a D-pad style, uh, this is not a bad choice. I'm I'm actually fairly impressed with how they've implemented. An, oops, I just blew up the queen and the other queen. Oh well. With I'm fairly impressed with how they well they've they've implemented this analog joystick to a digital connection like what's needed on the C64. Whoops. So it's it's pretty responsive. Um, there there are other options for you know Nintendo style D-pad style controllers for retro platforms. Um, one I know about in particular that I plan on getting some is a person or group called Retro Game Boys with a Z. Uh, they sell I think primarily on eBay. 
uh, eBay and um, oh, all right, that was bad. eBay and Etsy, and they make uh, Nintendo NES D-pad style controllers for a bunch of different systems, and they make them in different variations. Like they make a two-button one that has one of the buttons wired it with to up, just like the uh, BX stick I was showing you earlier. So they make you know the, the two-button platformer style. They make one for the Amiga that has alternate buttons. They make one for the uh, Sega Master System, PC Engine. So I plan on get I plan on getting probably one of those. I just wanted to try out. There are some games where it's kind of nice to have a controller style rather than a joystick to play with. Other controllers people like using. Considered getting the variant that will allow me to use it on the MSX. Nice, they have an MSX one as well. Is that common with any other system, or is it all wiring on its own? All right, I'm gonna get my. There we go. Got my double ship. It's the only way to play Galaga. I'm really sorry to see what happened about the uh, Galencia Chaos Sphere crowdfunding. Looks like that sort of disappeared. I, I didn't get in on it, but I've seen people pretty unhappy about the state of it. And I understand that, that Jason is having health problems, and I hope he's doing well. I hope he recovers. But Galencia, this one is, is a really fun game. I really dig it. wear out my thumb here. And that's, the, that's another problem. Is it's, it's a lot easier to just mash buttons. Then I'll switch back over to the... So it's interesting that this, this controller does not work with the back bit 2 bit. That's unfortunate. I guess it has something to do with how it either powers the... Because there's, there's active electronics in this thing. I think it uses a bilateral switch uh, to implement that thumbstick. So it's, it's a bummer that that doesn't work. Let me reconnect this guy here. I'm going to call the pinout comparisons between the th three to four platforms. Yeah, I, I know nothing about MSX. Yes, this is a PAL C64. Another another awesome person on Twitter helped me gather the parts that I needed to convert this thing from NTSC to PAL. So yeah, you can just really mash the buttons on these arcade style sticks. I don't know if you can even hear me on the camera above the noise of the buttons. No, you don't. There we go. Same style as CC4 and Atari consoles. Some luck with the pro line. The pro line of what? Sorry, I'm, I must be missing. Ah! I'm trying to pay attention to chat and play video games. Not easy. I don't know how YouTube real streamers do it. Oh, the 7800 controller. Yes, right. That is that has a that has two inputs for fire buttons. All right. Well, anyway, we've 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 been there. Um, Yes, speaking of the 7800, 7800 has the controller, they had an interesting uh, schematic on that one because this it 
uh, allowed the same controller to work with the 2600 and the 7800. Uh, just the other button didn't do anything. And I have here a version of the PC board that I designed for Ben Edwards when he was making his joysticks. So this is the 7800 type uh, PC board and it uses just a couple of resistors in there to join to join the, the buttons in such a way that that it makes the two buttons work on the 7800 and the one button works on the 2600. But then we added, I'm trying to remember, right, added this pad here for a switch that he could put on and it would allow this board to switch between the Atari 7800 version and the Sega Master System because they're, the pinout is slightly different. So this, this one common PC board, you could either put a switch in and then the joystick would be switchable or you just solder in jumpers and you could use the same PC board for manufacturing uh, Sega Master System controllers and uh, Atari 7800 controllers. So that was a pretty fun project. Um, Oh, yeah, I have, like, various different parts and stuff over here. Some more goodies that he sent me, like, here's a, here's a purple sparkly ball top. And a lot of people like to customize their uh, arcade systems with different type ball tops, because these guys here, they just... They screw on and off, it's just a threaded rod right there. So you can take this other one here. Ah. And screw that down. So people who want to you know, make manufacture and build themselves custom main cabinets or arcade cabinets, you can get funky looking ball tops for their joysticks like that. And then uh, see, these are these are the Sanwa style push buttons. And what they are is, uh, is the plastic shell and these clamps. You you press them down into the holes, and then these clamps spring out and, and lock it into the plastic or the metal if you're on a real arcade system. And then inside here is the actual switch mechanism that gets depressed by that uh, plunger when you press down on that. And it makes a, it makes a very very fast action push button. And they come in all sorts of different colors, so. When you're when you're building a custom main cabinet, you can put everything in what whatever color scheme you want to have it in. <clears throat> oh yeah, and of course, I have a few of these around here, Super Nintendo style controllers, but USB, and I use them for either my PlayStation Classic or Mister for playing modern consoles that want to. D-pad style. You can use these for the Super NES, Super NES emulator, NES emulator, basically anything. Um, this is made by Buffalo. Very, very inexpensive for me to take to, to game nights to use on, you know, Raspberry Pis or Misters or things like that. Um, I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about or what a, anyone anyone got any controller projects out there favorite things they're looking into let's see uh, it's been about an hour Get a little more water here mm. It'd be awesome to make the arcade style in a handheld form factor. Oh, this this type of stick in in this type of uh, uh, controller, that would be a very tight fit. Um, 
I have one. I don't. I don't have it here to show off because it's on loan along with my Atari to a friend of mine. Uh, Benj made one. <clears throat> I think he calls it the BX81, 82. I don't know. It was about this big, so you know, about this much size of it, considerably smaller than than the BX80 in a different case. And the problem is, you know, everything just barely fits in there. Because this this stick, I don't know if you were here earlier, this stick is not a small thing. It's got all these micro switches around it and this big gate there. So it's really hard. Yeah, the, the one he built, yeah, it only has one button. So you, you lop that off. But it, it's it's a really tight fit to get a big, big-ass JLF stick. And then you got the connector coming off one end into a smaller box. But... Yeah, it can be done. I'm sorry I don't have the the that smaller controller here, but it is it is a really nice controller. Uh, so the guy's name is Benj Edwards. Uh, he's on Twitter at Benj Edwards. Unfortunately, he's not making sticks anymore. This was this was a thing. He he really basically he he built one for him and his brother, and then someone saw it and was like, "Oh my God, would you make me one?" And someone else saw it, and so he tried for a little while to, to make a go at actually doing a big run of joysticks. I helped him design some of the electronics on his, particularly the BX110 run. He did a big production run of those. And uh, I think I actually have um, a proto... Yeah, this, this was a prototype of the circuit, the circuit board that went into the, the Super Nintendo. This is just an, an, an early test run. The, the eventual production run actually used all surface mount parts. Um, but this is you know just a couple of uh, couple of shift registers and then resistor networks for pull-ups. The the Super Nintendo and Nintendo controllers are electrically pretty simple and, and they work really well. But yeah, so he he did a run of maybe 150 of those joysticks. And he built, I don't know how many, of the Atari style. And they were pretty expensive, but in the end, even even with the price he was charging, it just wasn't worth his time. Yeah, because it, it was a very labor-intensive thing to do. And it's, and it's because he put all of the attention to detail. Like, the screw tops on this one are painted black, even. So, it, it really was not... It, it was a labor of love. People making uh, arcade-style sticks for vintage consoles... Um, obviously, monster joysticks. I don't have any of those, but I've seen pretty decent stuff about there. I can't say whether I, I like their acrylic case. It's kind of it comes with a bunch of laser cut acrylic that you have to sort of assemble, and then a, a PC board with a connector on it that allows you to swap out the the cable. Um, I, I really like these cases. They're they're big and sturdy. I don't know about the Monster Joysticks uh, acrylic assembled case, but people, I, I haven't seen any anybody saying, oh, you know, this is terrible. People people definitely like them. And X Arcade was, yes, the X Arcade was massive. That thing was like, it was, it was basically the size of my Commodore, I would say. Maybe a little, maybe a little smaller. I can't actually get this, move this thing into the shop because of all my cables. Yeah, that, that thing was huge. <coughs> Another thing, um, at games, I have placed a reservation. They haven't actually converted it into an order yet, but I have reserved one of their uh, USB slash Bluetooth arcade control consoles. And the the pro version, it's you know, it's it's a it's a big sucker, you know, and it has two arcade style joysticks six buttons for each one, and then a trackball in the center. And I'm really looking forward to that trackball, because one of my favorite arcade games is Centipede. And I don't have any trackball controllers for any of my stuff. <clears throat> I have, you know, my mister has, uh, you know, the Centipede core on there, but, you know, you can't play Centipede with a, with a joystick. Although I grew up doing it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'll, I forget what they call it, but... Um, yeah, Missile Command and Centipede. We, we have a Centipede machine at the local arcade 
and a missile command. And I grew up playing a ton of those on my Atari 400, but I never knew the joy of playing it with with real controls, playing it with a, a trackball. And that's it's a totally different experience and highly, highly enjoyable. So I'm looking forward to that, um, the, the At Games uh, controller. And it comes with a wireless streaming box that I guess you it has the HDMI port you can attach that to the TV and it runs MAME and stuff but the the controller the control surface itself is just blue, uh, Bluetooth and USB as I understand it so you can use it with anything um, so I plan on using that with my mister um, play me a little centipede I'm looking forward to that I don't know when that's actually gonna come out um, but as soon as it as soon as I find something I'll tweet about it and uh, Bill of Judas on Twitter, Bill, Bill LeJudas, he tweets about uh, the at game stuff a lot too. Want to get one for the C64? Get one of what for the C64? A trackball? Do they make a trackball for the, that's compatible with these games? I know, I know the Atari systems. There, there was a, there was a trackball. I forget what what its designator was. Um, but it had it had a little switch on the bottom, and there were two modes you could put it in. One was trackball mode, and I don't know exactly how it was encoded for that one. But the other one was joystick mode, and it would emulate a joystick, I guess, just by pressing the directions very fast. So you could use it with games that weren't designed to use it. I don't know how how well it worked, but I'd love to get my hands on one. Um, I don't see them I don't see them come up too often. Yeah. Um, that's. Pretty much all I had, like off off the top of my head to to yak about. It's been going on for an hour now. Wouldn't mind trying to find a solution for the ColecoVision as a roller controller replacement. Tell me about those controllers. What's what's the deal with those controllers? Oh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. This might actually be a new record for number of viewers on one of my streams. I don't stream very often. Not, I'm not trying to, you know, get to the point where I can monetize the stream. I can never pull that off. Don't need it anyway. This is just, just, just hobby. I just like hanging out with people. You know, can't actually go to the arcade. Can't actually go talk to with people and stuff. So, yeah, I will definitely talk to you about a bread bin for sure. Because uh, my my C60 my 64 C here need needs company. Absolutely. I don't know uh, what sort of systems you're interested in. I, I don't have a very big collection. Um, I, I have, you know, a few Ataris. The Tandy 100s that I tweeted about the other day is pretty much the largest part of my collection. <laughs> Trade for parts. <laughs> nice. Wish I could recall off the top of my head, given there were some games that needed it. Hmm. The roller controller. Interesting. Chips, parts, sticks, whatever. Do you have the ColecoVision Super Action Controllers? Sounds like this. I, I don't have any experience with the Intellivision or the ColecoVision, so it sounds like there was there was a real ecosystem around those suckers. I know a bunch of my bunch of my Twitter friends all have those early consoles. Steering wheel controller, foot pedal. Oh, nice. Yeah. <coughs> Poor kids like us use an Atari 2600. Yeah, I, I didn't have the 2600. I had the I had the Atari 400. In fact, let me hop over here. This is my very first computer, the actual Atari 400 I had as a kid, and uh, my dad modified it to have uh, 48k of RAM, so that's where that's where I get my handle from, so it could play all the Atari 800 games on our Atari 400. <coughs> uh, 
uh, accessory SA controller. Let's see what this is. Super action controller. Oh, that weird pistol grip thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've I've definitely seen that. I think television as a kid. I think I picked up the Coleco about ten years ago. Yeah, I think I probably picked up this C64 maybe twenty years ago at some yeah flea market or something for for nothing. And you know now they're selling for hundreds of dollars. And it took you know I don't know fifty bucks in parts to fix this thing up. I had to replace both CIAs. And then uh, I wound up replacing the crystal on the VIC-2 to turn it into PAL. Sold my C128 to a kid, my mom's boss, trying to track him down, see if he still has it. Sold him all my games. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I jumped right from, from Atari 400 to PC 386. Um, but this, this thing was, was good. It's, it's got a bunch of mods onto it. Uh, this one right here, this this DB25 is is not standard Atari. This is, my dad added that because he built a case for an external 800 keyboard. So we had an external uh, full stroke 800 keyboard that connected to the Atari 400. And so I use it for word processing and wrote school papers and stuff on it. That's another thing I wanted to test. I forgot all about this. <coughs> uh, PC. T oh, the Atari PC-10. Nice. I assume that's what you're talking about. So that was the other thing I wanted to do. Is I'm not tested the Hyperkin Ranger with the ZX Spectrum. So this is just my 48K ZX Spectrum. I uh, Traded a guy in the UK a couple of floppy drives for it. You have all the Commodores. Oh, it was a Commodore PC-10, not, not Atari. I can't... I know Atari made a weird PC. Managed to score my 128 off someone who wanted to get rid of theirs. I had to use a Genesis AV cable. Yeah, I, I, have, the, I have the proper AV cable for my C64 here. I uh, bought one from some shop in the UK. All right, so that's what I was going to do. We're going to grab the video cable, this guy, and a power cable. And everything's wrapped around everything else. Sorry about that. So Ben Peterson in Germany is trying to collect all the various Commodore 64s. Commodore lad in the UK. <laughs> so yeah, I've seen... I have seen both of their tweets. They have some serious collections going on. So let's switch over to the uh, video here. We can light plug in. So what I've got here is I've got a, a div MMC future from the future was 8-bit. Connected on here for loading games. I actually do have a real Kempston joystick interface for the Sinclair it came with it from, from the guy I bought it from. So this, you know, just plugs onto the back and just gave you the joystick port. But this has the Kempston port as well as the SD card loader. Which is very nice. So plug in the Ranger and switch my scaler over to the to that. I got nothing? Why you, why you give me nothing, huh? Oh, there we go. All right. And switch my other monitor here so I can see it myself. All right, so we're going to press the little NMI button <coughs> in the menu here. I also have a bread bin that I need to get working. C64C model. Yeah, I like the C64C. There, it, it doesn't have that problematic um, PLA, uh, less RAM chips to, to fail. I, 
I find they're just generally more reliable. Uh, it was not hard at all to get this thing, get this one working of mine. All right, so first off the bat, this seems to work. I'm gonna go down here. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate it. Have a good yet afternoon slash evening. Uh, let's play some jetpack. <coughs> so I'll switch this to the Kempston joystick, one player. All right. All right. Well, that seems to work pretty well. All right. It's not not doing any weird stuff when I let off the uh, stick, so that's nice. No wait, no, 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 no. I'm gonna go over here. The parts. I think the secret to this game is basically never let off the fire button, right? I seem to have a little, little bit of trouble hitting the diagonals on this. I don't know if that's me or if the controller is not helping. I'm getting the hang of it though. <coughs> ah. Last bit of fuel. Or not. Okay. Sweet. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Thomas. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. I, I'll I'll try to come up with something. This 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 is a fun way to to hang out with people. It's a fun way to fun way to interact since can't go anywhere. COVID COVID streams. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll probably pack it in about now. Unless everyone wants to keep watching me uh, lose very badly at jetpack. Oh look. <coughs> well, I just wanted to make sure that the Controller works. Let me switch it to the other way. So now if I hold it like this. Yeah. It's hard to play with my right hand, but it seems to work. Yeah. All the directions are mapped just like they should be. Cool. Alright, well, I'm pleased to report that Hyperkin Ranger works with the ZX Spectrum Kempston interface. So, anyway, yeah, thanks, thanks for everyone for hanging out. Uh, Tom Fuchs, uh, it's cholera. A bunch of other people. Let me scroll back a little bit in chat here. Bahamut. Yeah. Well, um, let's see. It's coming up. Actually, at five o'clock. There's something going on. Oh, right. So five o'clock for uh, those of you uh, who are Tandy fans. There's is the the TRS80 live stream, the TRS80 Trash Talk live stream. I think they're going to be streaming on YouTube as well, so I'll probably tune in for that. I Danza. Raid, I used to have one of those. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, uh, the TRS80s. Yeah, I'm, I've never had one. I have the Model 100s, um, but uh, there's there's a show every year called Tandy Assembly. And it's for all the the Tandy systems and uh, the Cocos, the the Z80 systems, Model 100s, the PCs, MC10, all of that. It's scheduled for October, at the end of October. They haven't canceled it yet, 
Don't know if it might actually happen. I hope it does, because I'd like to go there. Uh, do I drink Stella? Uh, no, I, I pretty much just drink uh, flavored water. <laughs> yeah, I got the Moonshiner beard, don't I? All right, folks. Well, um, anyway, I'll see you guys around some other time. Do some other stream, play some more games, talk some retro tech. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for... Yeah, uh, thanks for hanging out, Idanza. Uh, appreciate it. It's it's way more fun to have people to talk with when you're doing streaming. Very much appreciate it. <laughs>